ready? Pencils, right? You all have copies of the notes from the other night. That's what Judy and I were talking about. Good evening. Welcome and thank you for coming this evening. The format for both public input sessions, as we had on Tuesday and tonight, is to present an overview of the process used by the task force to develop the preliminary proposal, to answer clarifying questions so that you understand how the decision was made, and to give you an opportunity to express your concerns. The task force will then consider all of the input received in the two evenings, respond to board questions and concerns, and prepare a final recommendation. School board discussion will occur as scheduled at our monthly work session on March 8th at 7.30 p.m. in the Educational Service Center. The earliest the board would act on the boundaries would be at the March 17th board action meeting. It is not our intention to debate or discuss the points that you bring this evening. Instead, we are here to listen, make notes, and examine concerns expressed as we prepare our final recommendation. If you have a written proposal that you would like us to see, please send it to our board secretary, Ken Weir, and he will distribute copies to all board members and committee people. One note that I'd like everyone who is coming to speak will have their views, and although we may not all agree with them, I would like us to at least extend our fullest consideration to them as they are speaking. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Venema, who will review the process and rationale for the preliminary proposal. Thank you, Mr. Leahy. Uh, I'd like to make sure that you all have copies of the materials that you might want to refer to tonight. Uh, and on the back table, there's a copy of the map. There's also a copy of the packet, um, the proposal as it was presented to the, to the school board. And if you'd like a copy of that, you can pick that up on the, on the way out this evening, or um, there should be plenty of copies back there for you. In addition, we've also left copies of the presentation made to the board regarding our middle school programs. Most of you may have attended a parent night where individual programs were discussed by grade level, but in case you'd like to see the program changes that have been made, feel free to pick up one of those at the back as well. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the task force that are here this evening. Uh, Barbara Adair, who's the coordinator of Pembroke Home and School Association in the red sweater. Steve Frederick, the principal of North Penn Junior High School, down this way. Wendy Hibsman, the president of Penfield Home and School Association. Is Wendy, Wendy wasn't able to make it tonight. Uh, Judith Miller, the principal at Penbrook, on the far end. Linda Pavlik, the president of North Penn Junior High School Home and School Association, to my right. Jean Romano, parent from Penfield. Joan Stow, the principal from Penfield. Vicki Walton, parent from Penbrook. And Jody Williams, a parent from the junior high school. I'd like to publicly thank them for all of the hard work and energy and they've put into this project. At this time, I'd like to introduce Linda Pavlik and ask her to, to comment uh, on the responsibilities of the task force and the guidelines and considerations that were used by the task force in its work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our task force was given five primary responsibilities by Dr. Elko, as are listed in the report that you picked up in the back of the room. At our initial meeting in December, we reviewed the newly established elementary boundaries, the Pennsylvania Economy League enrollment projections, and the building capacities at Penbrook, Pendale, and Penfield, and examined some preliminary options. We also discussed the guidelines and considerations that we felt would provide direction and priorities for the establishment of new attendance areas. At subsequent meetings, we created and reviewed a total of 12 different options, some of which were suggested by administration and others created by committee members. In our review of options, each of the eight guidelines and considerations listed in the report helped to direct our thinking. As we continued with our work, the task force ultimately reached consensus that minimizing the splitting of elementary attendance areas, 
enabling the Pendale renovation and accommodating future growth should receive highest priority. In the examination of each option and student enrollment projected in each, it became clear that one option best met the guidelines. Of the options considered, only two did not split any of the new elementary sending areas. The remaining 10 options involve splitting between two and five attendance areas at various geographical points. The task force felt that keeping elementary attendance areas intact would be ideal if individual school enrollment requirements could be met. In order to accommodate the two-year renovation project at Pendale, the student population there needs to be reduced so that sections of the building can be vacated and classes of students relocated. To accommodate this need, the student enrollment at Pendale needs to be reduced from its current 1750 to approximately 1300 to 1350 for the next two years. It is also desirable to have a balanced population at Penbrook and Penfield, since these two schools have the same student capacity. Another consideration was to accommodate future growth in each school to provide a reasonable assurance that the need for future boundary changes would be minimized. Dr. Venner. Thank you, Linda. At this time, I'd refer you to your map to make sure that you clearly understand what the pre preliminary proposal is. And of course, I think it's pretty obvious by the red lines, red lines indicating the proposed boundaries, and the black lines indicating elementary sending areas newly established, that those students in Hatfield, Nash, and Walton Farm sending areas would attend Penfield, the students living in Gwyn Noor, Gwyn and Square, in North Wales would attend Penbrook. And, of course, the students in Bridal Path, Inglewood, Culp, Montgomery, Oak Park, and York Avenue would attend Pendale. As Mrs. Pavlik mentioned, this was one of two options that we looked at that did not split the uh, elementary sending areas. The other option that kept elementary boundaries intact that we explored put students from Gwyn Noor, North Wales, and Montgomery at Penbrook, Hatfield, Nash, and Walton Farm at Penfield, the same as it is in the proposal, and the remaining schools to Pendale. The problem with that option is that it would result in a population at Pendale that would be too high for us to conduct renovation without major disruption. The remaining 10 options that were considered did produce enrollments that could satisfy the population needs that Mrs. Pavlik outlined that, that we need in each school. But each one of these options would split elementary attendance areas. In fact, one of the ones we looked at split up to uh, five different areas. In addition to uh, efforts to keep it Elementary attendance areas intact, which we felt was a priority and has been expressed many times in our boundary deliberations, and to reduce the enrollment for Pendale renovation, the second major aspect of our decision making. The third major consideration was the potential for growth that would exist in each newly created attendance area. The proposal reflects our best effort to balance the estimated PEL growth among three new sending areas. Now, PEL is the Pennsylvania Economy League. It's the organization that we've hired many times and has uh, been rather accurate in projecting our enrollment increases. They also project areas where growth is most likely to occur. And of course, those figures were important to us as we tried to determine and balance out the areas where that growth might happen. In addition to the uh, three primary guidelines, other, there were five other guidelines that the committee considered in deliberating. One was the proximity of students to each school, bus ride time, number of school changes a child would, would have to have, uh, the consideration of grandfathering, and future high school boundaries. All of those were part of our uh, review process. Related to these five guidelines, the task force felt strongly that grandfathering should not be employed. That would involve some students in the same sending area going to different schools and becomes very, very complex with the busing situations. And while the high school boundaries were, were discussed, 
Too little is known at this time to make predictions about where those boundary lines might be drawn. Several people the other evening mentioned that that ought to be a stronger consideration, and I believe the group will take a look at that uh, once we get back together. If you look on page three of the packet, you'll see the enrollments that have been projected for the three-year period. And we did that, of course, because we need to think beyond 1994-95 and think about what these numbers would look like for the next three years. I'll wait till you get a chance to pick that up. I'll refer you again to the top of page three in the packet, which shows you, based upon straight line projections, the current number of students who now exist and the grades that would be affected here, and our estimations of growth, the populations of the attendance areas in the preliminary proposal are shown there. And you'll see that we have a relatively decent balance between Pembroke and Penfield. We have about 1,340 students, 1,341 at Pendale. And for the next two years, 94, 95, 95, 96, we have a, a fairly well-balanced population before we see some rather significant growth uh, during the process. Now, the key and crucial years for renovation are 94, 95, and 95, 96. That's the time when we'll be needing to, to move students from one segment to another. Uh, of, of the buildings so that the renovation can occur. In order to do that, obviously, we have to reduce that population uh, to enable that to happen. One additional advantage of, of the proposal that the committee has pre is presenting is the need to change boundaries in the near future is less likely than it would be in other options, something that we've always had in the back of our mind is we don't want to have to do this again. I know you don't. But um, by balancing the, uh, what we predict is the population growth areas among the three sending areas, we feel, number one, that the growth will be somewhat equal for all three sending areas. And you, knowing that the capacity of these buildings uh, will allow us to accommodate growth for some time, we feel it's less likely for us to have to re reconsider or change these boundaries in the future with this uh, preliminary proposal. I'd like, like to also make a few comments before we entertain your, your comments regarding our new middle school programs. You need to understand that the, the curriculum in all three schools will be the same. It will be consistent at Penn State. The same courses, the same programs will be offered both curricular and in, as far as extracurricular programs are concerned in all three. The teaming concept that has been employed by uh, our new instructional model will help to reduce the size of the buildings because students will travel for the most part uh, within a group of five teachers in rooms that are in close proximity to one another. The average team size in a range of 110 <coughs> to 130 or so and that teaming itself makes the size of the school smaller, Some, something like a school within a school concept. Also, it's important that we point out that currently in eighth and ninth grade is, is the opportunity where students have the chance to participate in co-curricular activities, sports, music, student government, drama. And by moving to all three schools with these opportunities, we certainly increase the opportunities for students to participate in extracurricular activities well beyond what they can do now. Right now, they exist in one school where we have 1,700 students. We'll be spreading that out over three schools, so there will be three football teams and three uh, girls field hockey teams and so forth. 
That pretty much concludes the comments that I'd like to make at this point. Any additional comments that we make will really be clarifying comments uh, based upon comments that are made by the audience. When you come to the microphone, uh, please state your name and address for our records. And we'll keep notes and the committee will take the input received tonight and last Monday evening and we'll be uh, reconsidering the things that are brought to our attention. Thank you. Uh, first come, first serve. My name is Kenneth Collins. I live at 241 Cherry Lane. And uh, I'd like to express my view that the uh, proposed middle school boundaries uh, could be revised somewhat. Uh, they do need to be revised. The problem, as I see it, is that the Pendell School is simply uh, you know, too many students. Uh, you've got the way it stands, you've got uh, twice as many students going there as you do to either Penfield or Pen, uh, Penbrook. Now, uh, of course, Pendale has a larger capacity, so it's naturally expected to have more students, but a two-to-one ratio is just too great a disparity, and there ought to be a way to, to siphon off some students uh, to either Penfield, Penbrook, or both. Uh, be more fair to the students who go to Pendale, those who live clearly in a Pendale area will be going there no matter how you draw the boundaries. Revision that I would suggest involves the Inglewood neighborhood where I live. The Inglewood neighborhood is a neighborhood that is in every sense a Toa Menson neighborhood. And like the Nash and Walton Farm Toa Menson neighborhoods, they, I believe, should also go to Penfield. Um, first of all, the, um, they, these, these kids basically grow up together going to the ten of Toa Menson pool, they, the TYA, all the Toa Menson community activities. Uh, they're all part of, and these kids basically have years now growing up, they all know each other, and to pull them, the Inglewood neighborhood, out of that Penfield group, putting them to Pendale, is just seems to me unfair and it's unnecessary. Uh, doesn't require too much of a change really, just that one red line uh, being redrawn, you know, Welsh Road to Valley Forge Road. Uh, how far it should go, of course, whether you as far as Snyder or Sumney Town Pike, I don't know the numbers well enough. That would be to, have to be determined by the numbers. Uh, okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. You can line up if you want, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> uh, my name's Gary Enline. I live at 310 Grays Lane in Montgomery Township. I have uh, two questions. Uh, last week when I attended the presentation at the at Pembroke regarding curricular, the new curriculum. I'd asked um, the principals about the co-curricular activities and what the philosophy was, and they said it was to allow as many students as they can to participate. Now, Pendale will have twice the number of students. If you're going to have a team, say, with 30 students at Pembroke or one of the other schools, are you gonna carry 60 or 70 kids and equip them at, Pen, at the new, uh, at Pendale? Yes, we would accommodate as many students as we can on in a given. So you're going to activity. carry 60 kids on a football team, and they're all Could going happen, to get equal sure. playing time. Well, I can't say that they get equal. I can't say that. I don't think it's fair to interrupt, sir. Well, I'll answer, I'll answer his question, and then you can have your turn. Um, yes, obviously, there's more with more students in in one school the chances for participation are not the same as they would be if there are fewer students. That's the same case in any setting, in any school system. When we create a, uh, two high schools, one of our high schools will be larger than the other. So those kind of circumstances would exist. But the way we try to accommodate that is that we would keep as many students as we possibly could on a given team or in an activity. That may meet a larger marching band or more kids on the football team. Um, we would accommodate them as best we can. The philosophy of a, of a middle school uh, athletic program is participation, particularly in the seventh and eighth grade league, uh, and so that's a priority. All right, I would ask you to consider somehow to afford the children the same opportunity in Pendale, because with that number of students, whether it's the band or a sports team or the newspaper, 
they're not going to be able to participate as if they attended a smaller school. My second question relates to the capacity. You said in the first two years, the population will be smaller in the Pendale School while you do renovations. Does that mean in the third year, now I know you have your projections here, but in the third year are you planning or is the expectation that you'll put extra population into Pendale because they have a larger capacity and the other schools do not? Um, what I'd like to know is how much extra capacity are in the two smaller schools so that their overflow does not have to be put into Pendale. Um, the maximum capacity in Penbrook and Penfield with the modulars in place is 950. Uh, we don't like to reach maximum capacities. Uh, but that's what we've identified it as. Uh, in Pendale, the maximum capacity is 1640. So you can see, based on those numbers, there's room for growth in each of those three areas. Okay, thank you. But in answer to your question, we would not be drawing. The, the proposal as it stands is for the increase in the areas that are feeding Pendale, Penbrook, and Penfield. There would not be, hopefully, there would not be a re-boundary that would, would be able to, that would say, okay, all of a sudden Penbrook is up to 2,000 and we're bringing kids over. So one of the considerations was where the growth is going to occur in the next few years, and that's one of the decisions. Okay, say if Penbrook reaches capacity and Pendale is not, are you going to add modulars to Penbrook or are you going to redraw the boundaries? Well, you know, we have 14 modulars on each of those schools right now. Um, the board would certainly have quite a decision to make relative to that. Um, the numbers that you see in 96, 97 on this sheet show that the growth becomes dramatic. And we're concerned, of course, that for the next several years, we don't want those, those schools to reach capacity. And we're hoping and we feel that the, the, the way we balanced out the uh, the growth areas in the three sending schools, that the growth will be somewhat equal across all three, therefore we won't reach capacity for the foreseeable future. Thus, we won't have to consider boundary changes uh, for some time. Okay. Hopefully you. never. Uh, Jerry Collins. Uh, I live at 1006 Sawmill Way. Uh, my children go to Inglewood School. And a couple questions. If I could just pick up on the last gentleman's question. Uh, I think he asked about participation in athletics, and I think you said reasonably you'd accommodate as many students as possible. I think um, having experienced this firsthand in, in, act, in athletics at all levels, uh, what typically happens is you have 60 children who are out playing, and they don't play, and by the end of the year you have 33. So I don't really believe that we can look to saying that we're going to have more people participating in certainly not athletics. Um, I don't know about dramatics and other things because I'm not really involved in it. I don't know a lot about it. Um, but I think the opportunity is one issue. But I would like to just spend some time and ask a couple of questions. Um, Pendale, when you begin 1994, you have a capacity of 950. You've got 77 percent capacity on year one at Pendale, 72 percent at Penfield, and 81 percent capacity year one at the at the Pendale facility. And in 1997, you're going to go to 87 percent at, at Pendale and 82 at Pinbrook and 78 at Penfield. Um, it seems as though this dramatic growth that we're talking about is going to be experienced at Pendale. And I think if we look out in the future, I think it's reasonable to believe that we're going to force growth out in those other two areas uh, only because of something that was mentioned uh, by one of the uh, people who spoke on uh, the first meeting, and that is you're having a country club school. If I'm moving into this community, I'm going to ask a realtor about the schools. And I'm going to find a, a facility that my child can participate in any number of activities that is small, close to my home, and it's not going to be in the center of Lansdale. And I think we have to recognize that. Um, I have another issue and a major concern as being an African American, and that is that I think that there will be a disproportionate number of minority students in the Pendale facility. Based on the feeder uh, geography boundaries that you currently have, if you look to where the African American students are located, 
They are in areas that would typically be feeders into that, what will soon be that new boundary. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. And I tend to think that as we have more minorities moving into the community, unless they're at Merck, unless they're someplace else, they will tend to move into those areas. And that's just not African Americans, but it's also Hispanics and also Asians. As a result of it, I don't think you're going to have a quote unquote equal facility. I would not like to see, you know, a separate but equal facility, nor would I like to see a facility that's going to be a predominantly black feeder school, because I think that that tends to send the wrong message to, to parents, to uh, the community, and I personally don't like it. Hi, my name is Ken Waltman. I'm of 914 Tennis Way in Talmanson. Uh, I was here on Monday night, and at that time I was here basically to plead my own case in regards to trying to get my child into the Penfield Junior High School. But I'm here tonight because I wanted to talk a little bit more about the bigger issue here of how setting junior high school boundaries will affect the high school boundaries. Many of the people who have been to this past meeting and the meeting here tonight, their anxiety is more over the fact that they, even after junior high school boundaries are set, they still will not know where their child is going to high school. And that seems to be more of a problem than setting that junior high school boundaries. We should not be setting junior high school boundaries independent of the high school boundaries. Once we set a junior high school boundary, by default, we should be setting the high school boundaries. We shouldn't need to have another task force to do this. Unfortunately, the, in considering the high school boundaries, point number eight in the guidelines dealt with the high school boundaries, the lowest priority. And most of us here probably believe that should be the highest priority. They aren't listed in order of priority other than the first three. OK. Um, one of the problems with the proposed plan that it appears to me and m many others that there's a fatal flaw in the way that it's designed, and that is this. The current senior high school, this building, and the new high school, North Penn East, are both located in the, the same junior high school district of Pendale. This means that for every ninth grade student, either now or in the future, who goes to Pendale will face losing friends when that school is broken into two when they have to go split up to go to different high schools. On Monday night, almost every parent who, sit, who had kids who went to the elementary schools and have been in the fiasco of having their child's rearranged had said that although it was somewhat traumatic for them, because the kids were young, they were able to adjust and adapt to the changes. If we do this to junior high school kids who are 14 or 15 years old and break them up at that time, it's going to be much harder to adjust. They won't adjust as quickly, and they may not adjust at all over the long haul. We should decide then which junior high school will feed the North Penn West and normally that's this high school and it should be two junior high schools and which junior high school will feed the North Penn East. It's kind of obvious that no, the Penfield Junior High School because of its location has to be one of the junior high schools that feeds this high school here. The question then is which of the other two junior high schools can we feed into the North Penn East. Uh, on Monday night I took the copy home and I spent uh, made Xerox after Xerox copy trying to come up with some sort of proposal or solution that might geographically align the North Penn East and the North Penn West and yet have two junior high schools that fit the North Penn West and only one that fits the, the North Penn East. And it, it's going to be impossible to satisfy all the people. The question is, can we come up with some sort of solution or proposal in which everyone can live with? They may not be all be happy with it, but at least they can, be, they can live with it. If we make the, I tried to make the Pendale as the feeder school for North Penn East. And no matter how many times I tried to do it, it crossed just so many different boundaries for the elementary school that it's just about, I don't, I don't know how we can make Pendale the school to feed North Penn East, even though it's probably uh, size-wise the best one you want to go in that direction. The easiest boundary to make is the Penfield boundary. As a matter of fact, on the proposed solution that I, I gave tonight, and I have more copies to give you, I actually left it as is and didn't even concede to my own request to make those people living north of Troxler Road go to Penfield. Most, I cannot speak for all the people, but my own concern was if I can get my son to go to Penfield, 
by default, I'm quite sure he's going to go to this high school, and that's the main reason why I wanted to go to him, him to go to Penfield. A better proposal might be to make the Penbrook Junior High School that junior high school that supplies North Penn East. And what I had proposed was a boundary line that would be North Wales Road and 309. If you live south of North Wales Road and east of 309, you would go to Penbrook Junior High School and then go to the new North Penn East High School. That means you would have elementary schools of North Wales and Montgomery going to Penbrook and North Penn East. And unfortunately, although it minimizes to just two, Gwynor and Bridal Path being split in two. And Gwynor has a very strange uh, shape. It almost looks like a figure eight. And the cut would be right in the middle of the figure eight. I don't have all the pupil numbers for these schools. And the problem may be that Penbrook may not be big enough to handle all the uh, kids going to North Penn East, which means that building might be underutilized. Uh, there's also the possibility you could take some of the, make the whole bridal path uh, elementary school go to North Penn East. But again, the, the most important point is it, it minimizes the number of cuts across elementary schools, and it does not cut any of the junior high schools in, in half. And that's the last thing I think we should want to do is subject our kids to losing friends at the age of 14 and 15 when they're in ninth grade. I've, I've given you some copies. Um, I hope that you like to, would consider that. Um, I would appreciate whatever feedback you might have on that. And the future of all our children is, ex is at stake. So I hope you can come up with the best decision possible. Thank you. Mr. Waltman. Could, could we ask for a clarification? Yes. You have it divided for the high schools. How did you divide them for the junior high schools? You left the junior high school boundaries as is? The Penfield, the, the, the Penfield boundary line is the same. It's, it's the, okay. uh, the yellow line down. Okay. And then the pink and yellow line separates Pendale from the uh, Penbrook. And it also would be the dividing line for the, for the two high schools. It, okay. They were both yellow lines, and it didn't look which one. Okay. I think we, we know what you're talking okay. about, and we'll be happy to look at Thank it. You. Um, let me confused. point out, of course, that we will not be able to keep uh, the Penfield uh, or Penbrook, for example, as the feeder school into the new high school. The new high school is going to accommodate up to 1,200 students. Certainly, Penbrook will never reach that size uh, in its current structure. But we'll look at that. Hello, my name is Cindy Cole, and I'm in Tomenson Township. I was here Monday, and I um, was not prepared to speak in front of a crowd. I get very nervous, so tonight I plan my speech and I hope you'll bear with me as I, as I do. We draw from our life experiences lessons with which to guide us in future decisions. So it would come as no surprise to anyone that my husband would choose to settle in the North Penn area having been raised here his entire life. My decision to build our house eight years ago only three miles from our previous home of seven years were based on different reasons. Although mine is not a typical story, it is a proven possibility nonetheless. I attended seven elementary schools in, in as many separate school districts. Excuse me. In the spring of sixth grade, we moved to Buckingham. I finished my elementary years, however, maintaining a high academic achievement. By January of my eighth grade year, I would move once again to Asbury Park, New Jersey. <clears throat> Here, seventh and eighth grades were split sessions in the elementary schools to accommodate the building of a new middle school in the spring. <clears throat> I graduated to the, um, excuse me, to the high school with honor roll status. While at Asbury High, I enjoyed participating on the tennis and swim teams. I also was awarded the President's Fitness Award twice, and I was a member of the Honor Roll Society. In June following 10th grade, I moved to Lansdale. Here, I would attend North Penn High School, where I went from a school population of 500 to a school possibly twice that. I struggled through the first marking period of my junior year, and by the second marking period, the incomplete stood out amongst the A's. On February 13th, I quit school. It has been said that friendships don't matter, but the quality of the education. I'd have to argue that Hatboro Horsham, Central Bucks East, Asbury Park, and North Penn School District would feel that, there's, that they have a quality education program, but they failed what I would consider to be their main objective, 
to produce a high school graduate with a high academic standard. With, without a peer group core to buffer the ills of the world and support me through the complexities of the maturation process, I failed to receive the quality education that was being offered to me. I do not feel that as a committee you are, inflex you are inflexible to see that there are changes that can be made by not realizing the need to set the high school boundaries first and to next make a common middle school boundary to the students and lessen the, um, excuse me, to, the, to that high school, which would help form a cohesive environment for the students and lessen the stress of the high school split. This would then balance the attendance within the middle schools. Without this, I feel this proposal will fail those students as well. There's a whisper growing among, among the community that you cannot correct this problem. As a parent, <clears throat> where am I? As a parent, we often set limitations for our children, something as simple as not crossing the street. As a committee, I urge you, when you go to the board with your recommendations, that you would consider this simple rule as well. Nat natural boundaries and township lines could be easier to prove than anything else, and man-made ones. Thank you. My name is Sue Lonergan. I live at 26 Highland Avenue. I'd like to start by thanking everybody for all their time and effort. I've been on committees. I know what it's like, and I know sometimes it seems like a thankless task at this point, and I frankly hate to be one of the few up here saying I'd like to make a change, but I would like to make a change. If, if, I'd like to go over to the map if that's okay. Highland Avenue is right here. I have a daughter in sixth grade at Pembroke, a son in second grade at Glen Moore, and for all of these years we've been walking or driving the 1.4 miles to Glen Moore or Pembroke. And it's not the distance that's an issue, it's really a safety factor for us. And as a result, most of the time we do drive our children. And, and if you've ever gone to Glen Moore School in the morning or in the afternoon, it's a nightmare because so many of the other parents do that too, and it actually becomes unsafe. And looking at Pendale, which is a block and a half from our house, which I would have no issue with my daughter walking back and forth by herself. Not that she's incapable, but that I don't trust the rest of the world with walking by herself. It's difficult for me to accept her going to Pendrook because we are so close to Pendale. Now I feel kind of like an outcast here because everyone's arguing the other way. And I first consulted her to see how she would feel. And, and she has, had, it, even though most of her friends are at Pembroke, she has several going to Pendale and would feel very comfortable there. And that's, that, that's my request, to move the boundaries out a little bit so the people right here near Pendale actually go to Pendale versus over a mile walk to Pembroke. Uh, and I, I do have to agree that I think it makes a lot of sense to have all the elementary schools going to, going to the same middle schools. But I, I feel that our situation is a little bit different, and, and I'm concerned for the safety of my children. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Victoria Tanos. I live in 19 Highland. I have the same problem as she has. And I would like to mention something else. I have a kindergarten kid. I walked a couple of times to pick her up from uh, Gwennor, and I couldn't find anybody walking uh, down the street, which I walked, you know, to pick her up. And uh, imagine when you're walking at uh, 6.15 in the morning uh, during the winter time, and it's dark. And, uh, you know, nobody can see you if anything happened to you, and nobody can help you if anything happened. So it's really very dangerous, you know, for these kids to walk down there. And, uh, you know, it's my concern not just about my kids who are, uh, you know, just going to go, you know, across the street, you know, to Pendel. I have concerns about all the kids who are going to Gwen North from <coughs> our area because it's very, very dangerous, because I really tried it a couple of times, and it's really very dangerous. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Sandy Dillon. I live at 1127 Chelsea Court in Hatfield, and I'm within the AM Culp school boundaries. And I also want to thank the committee at first. I, I know how hard it is to volunteer and how thankless a job it can be. Um, I grew up in Hatfield, and I attended the North Penn schools, and I think, you know, they give a fine education. But I feel that Hatfield is still basically a small rural community. Uh, and when we bought our home, we were very secure in the knowledge that our children would go to the Hatfield schools. Um, if you send us to Pendale, you will be splitting Hatfield right down the middle. As someone said on Monday evening, Orvilla Road should not be a dividing line. Orvilla Road is more in the center of Hatfield. We go to the Hatfield pool. Our children uh, play with the Hatfield Little League. However, many of our children do not get to know each other until they go to Penfield. I feel that Penfield ties the Hatfield community together. My other major concern is with the large number of children attending Pendale and what that will do to a fair and equal education at all the middle schools. At least the team sizes should be the same. So the children that attend Pendale will get the same advantage in education as the other middle schools will provide. <coughs> Either this must be done by adding a fourth team to Pendale or by lowering the number of students going there and at the same time raising the number of students going to Penfield and Penbrook. I feel that if Culp students were allowed to continue to go to Penfield, that would help to lower the number attending Pendale to under 1,300, which would help with the remodeling. And also, it would be well within the capacity of Penfield. Culp would only bring in approximately 50 to 70 students per year. And as most of the Culp area is already well developed, that number should not increase by too much. This would also keep the Hatfield community together. I know this was not an easy job for the task force, but I think when you work with boundaries and numbers, you must also take into consideration the community ties that will be severed. Thank you. Hi. My name is Patty Parentosi. I live at 1100 Amber Lane. It's in Tomans and Township. I just want to go on record as saying that I think it's very unfortunate that um, you allowed the elementary boundaries to drive what the middle school will look like. Um, very unfortunate because it, I attended the elementary meetings and it seemed that the people that screamed the loudest and threw the biggest tantrums got what they wanted. And if any thinking person looks at that, they can see that all those <laughs> All those pie cuts and, and cake slices are what resulted. What I am urging you to do now, since the elementary seems to be cut in stone, this is not cut in stone yet. And you need to look. Anybody that's had this age level, that has taught this age level, has lived, has, has been administrator to this age level, knows that while we're saying education is important, we know what's really important to these kids. And please do not allow what has happened here to drive what's going to happen in the junior high and beyond. Thank you. My name is Dan Wagner and I live at 1210 Cabin Road. Uh, I'm just going to be as redundant as everybody else as far as Pendale. I only live a block away from Marvilla Road. I'll be leaving here tonight not feeling any more, feeling like none of my answers are answered about the site, being in the Pendale district ourselves, that uh, 1,400 children is way too many. I feel that my children's education is compromised by the size of this school as opposed to Penfield and the other school that, that they're going to be, that uh, is in this district. And I don't think that being a product of larger schools in Southern California, there is, always, there is always a safety issue and a multitude of other problems. So in your divine wisdom, I hope you consider that when you redesign your, or when you go back into your conferences and consider the boundaries that you're going to draw up for the up and coming years to come because I think you're going to severely compromise our children's education. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Don Powers, and I live at 102 Pauline Circle in Montgomery Township. I moved into this area here uh, two years ago in the North Penn School District from Philadelphia, and one of the reasons that I came up here was the quality of the education in the school. I got my first taste, however, of this redistricting in the elementary school, and it left a very, very sour taste in my mouth that I, too, want to reiterate with some of the other people had said about the squeaky wheel gets the grease. All I ask of you in this particular situation here is, is that, that you are fair and equitable in the way that you do this. It doesn't appear to me with the split that has been done with these different elementary schools that you are being fair and equitable in this situation. Uh, I and my children will go to Pendale anyhow, and that's, that's fine with me. That's how that this would shake out, but I ask that you're fair. If you're going to uh, allow some of the other schools that were in Pendale and break these districts up and not break by elementary school, I ask that you do it in this particular fashion here. And that is to go straight across. I love that to the staff. I don't know how to do it, but I don't want to go to school, but be fair when you do that and not in my particular opinion, it looked like gerrymandering to me. The way that it was done. That's my opinion. It should be cut. It should be cut in certain, uh, in, in this particular fashion here, however the numbers should go. Thank you very much, and I do appreciate you uh, volunteering on this task force here. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Roger Hebner. I live at 1061 Hunter Hill Drive in Tomenson Township. Um, I was part of a neighborhood group who spoke uh, with regard to the boundary lines being drawn for the elementary schools. Hopefully it wasn't a tantrum or a, <laughs> a squeaky wheel, but I guess it could be interpreted that way. Um, at the time, I was interested in making sure that my children didn't move for the third time to a new elementary school. Luckily, I guess I succeeded. Um, because the revision was considered and, and the boundary was changed. But at the time of those meetings, I remember thinking to myself that I hope I wasn't winning the battle and losing the war. Uh, by that, I, might, I was concerned about how the boundaries were going to shake out for the middle school and the high school. After the meeting I attended, I approached Mrs. Shields directly and said, is there going to be a tie-in between these boundaries? She says, those decisions are going to be made independently, and they haven't been made yet. I wasn't naive enough to think that that was in fact the case, but I think that was the public line at the time and I understand that. When faced with a knotty problem, we sometimes segment it and try to so solve it in separate areas. Sometimes that makes it easier, but it also takes away some of the indirect relationships that are there. And I think there are interrelated problems here. I specifically live in a small section of Tomenson Township which attends Gwynedd Square and ultimately Penbrook under this alignment. That seems logical enough, but I'm concerned about when the third shoe drops on this giant, the high school boundary. Logic and geography would tell me that I'm going to attend the existing high school here. My bet is that it's going to be a small group of people that does that from Gwinnett Square and Penbrook. I'm concerned that if you're attending school for nine years with children, that they're suddenly going to be in a different area and different students. Do I like the existing boundaries? Maybe. I don't really know. Not until I see the high school boundaries. An older gentleman I work with once told me, never let the nose of a camel in your tent. Pretty soon you're going to have the whole camel. I'd like to see the whole camel. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ellen Heilman. I live at 105 Holloway Circle in Montgomery Township. And just from looking at this map, I kind of agree with some of the people here in that I feel that the boundaries that you make for the junior high schools should coincide as much as possible with the high school boundaries that are going to be produced. Um, as I said, I live in Montgomery Township, and right now, most of the, I know there's a big group of children that live here because of Montgomery Elementary School, there's like 820 children already. So you're going to be taking them and putting them into Pendale. Now, I would assume that when the new high school is built, since our proximity is like one of the closest ones there, that you're going to be moving these kids back into North Penn East. Now, 
that would mean a, about half of the school, you're going to be splitting Pendale in half, and half the kids would go to one high school and half the kids would go to the other high school. And I don't know that that is what you'd want your children to go through when they're that age. That's all I had to say. Okay, Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. <laughs> no repeats. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, Dan Fisher, 904 Tennis Way. I spoke the other night. I just want to make a follow-up on um, Mr. <coughs> Collins' comments about participation. My son, you know, went to, uh, to uh, Inglewood. It's a small community of uh, six or 600 kids or 500 kids, whatever. He did well there. He went on to Penfield, did well there. He's now in the junior, the current junior high, and he's doing quite well there. He doesn't have a problem with the size of the schools. I mean, if he goes to Penfield or Pendale, he doesn't really care educationally. He cares extracurricular-wise. He has a big problem with that. Mr. Collins pointed out, and I think I mentioned it tonight, that equal participation isn't the same thing as the numbers on the team. If you have 60 kids on the team, the point of being on the team is to play in the game, not to be on the practice field. <coughs> I know that my daughter went through, she played she, or she ran track in the junior high. They had two boys track teams. Uh, I think they call them Columbia and Navy. So I, I would guess from that, that there's no PIAA rules against having double teams. Therefore, I would like you to consider, even though it's probably going to cost you a little few more dollars, to have double teams when, that's, when that seems to have the participation level to justify it. Thank you. Just, just a brief comment on that, Dan. Yeah, you're right. We did have two teams initially when uh, Pendale was first opened as an 8-9 school. Um, after some time, however, we never had enough, believe it or not, we didn't have enough students to fill those teams in all the leagues and in, in, on both teams in all the sports that we had identified. And it kind of fell apart. But we'll look at that again. It is not a PIAA rule at that level but uh, it is at the high school level. We'll look at that. Hi, my name is Linda Dwyer. I live at 1609 Latch String Lane in Hatfield. And I do want to thank the task force for all their hard work because I, I know it, it must have been <laughs> challenging. But we live in Hatfield Township. We're part of the Culp School. And I think that we should have a consideration to go to Penfield because it is in Hatfield Township, and it would try to keep the community together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Roseanne Zyko. I live in, on Woodland Drive in uh, Montgomery Township. And I've been going through the map since the breakup of the elementary schools. My child will now be moved to Bridal Path. I can live with that. My son's going to be going to Lands Pendale, being taken out of Penfield. I'm not too happy, out of Pembroke, rather. I'm not too happy, but I can live with that, too. But what I don't think I'm going to be able to live with is what I see developing in terms of the new boundaries for the high school. I know you say you don't know where they're going to be, and if that's true, what I'm asking you to do is to consider not necessarily the school boundaries and what's going to be feeding them, but rather the boundaries for the townships and the boroughs. And I think that would be probably the fairest and the most equitable way for everyone in the school district. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Andy Havington. I live at uh, 105 Meadowood Drive. And it uh, looks like I'm going to be part of Penn, uh, Penn Dale when my child goes to school there. My big concern is one of safety for the children. Um, I look at the estimates of population growth of less than 100 uh, children in that age group for a three-year period. Uh, living in the area and seeing the building that's going on, I, I really question that. And I, I'd like to see some figures further out. I think it would probably be much larger. But it's been my experience with, with children working with them that the uh, larger the group, the more problems you could have and will possibly come up. There's leaders and followers. And in, the age, in that age group, there's probably a lot more followers than leaders. Uh, so I'm not saying that one of my, my kids would do that, but 
bad things can happen. I think we can minimize the difference in the size of populations of the school. I think it would be best a concern for the children. And I, I fully support the gentleman's recommendation about a straight horizontal line across the, uh, uh, across the Pembroke uh, line there. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Lawrence Backland. I live on Merrill Drive in Hatfield Township, and I'm the uh, parent of what used to be two AM Culp uh, students, now one in the high school and one in the middle school at Penfield. And uh, one, two issues uh, I do have on my mind. One, ha one has to do with the number of students in each school. I think that um, something should be done to reduce the number of students in Pendale. Um, and I think there might be room in the two other middle schools. And then secondly, a uh, second issue, I talked to my middle school son uh, today about this. He does not want to go to Pendale. And I asked you to consider the, the grandfathering uh, because I think there are lots of other kids in that same situation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Karen Ritchie, I live at 1002 Springside Way in Tomenson. And um, first of all, I'd like to say the, I think the division of the elementary schools was appalling. The way the borders were split was so politically, it carved out neighborhoods, especially around Inglewood. It's mind boggling. The heart was ripped out of Inglewood. Only 30% of the children are currently going there now will be going there next year. My daughter's going to be a stranger in her own school. And as if that wasn't bad enough, now you're dividing the junior high line so she would go to Penn Dale. We live in Tomenson, and we just bought a house last year in, Tom in Tomenson. We lived in Tomenson before, but we, we try to keep her life stable by going to the same elementary school. And we go to the Tomenson pool, TYA baseball, we shop in Tomenson, and now she's not going to be going to school with anybody in her neighborhood, really. A township today is what a small town used to be. We have to try to maintain some sense of a community in our lives. We all work in different places, and the common bond we have when we come home is our children's schools. After my daughter goes to Pendale, she'll be told to say goodbye to her, the new friends she makes after ninth grade because she'll be going North Penn West, hopefully, I guess. Let's try to keep some continuity in our kids' lives. This isn't the Army. I would rather see splits after the elementary school than after junior high because the bonds are deeper and stronger then. I have a question, actually several questions. Uh, um, and I, I, was, I was late, so I'd like to know about the rationale in terms of, of retaining intact schools. Uh, you, you mentioned that was one of the options and why that was not considered. And the other one is uh, around the selection of faculty for the, uh, for the various schools in terms of how, what that process would be like, uh, how you will ensure that you will have uh, similar quality of faculty um, as well as the, the, the team development process and what that would look like. And, um, and one last, I guess, a statement, and that is around the congestion that will occur as a result of these new schools. When you're looking at the, at the infrastructure or lack of that we have in Lansdale, uh, getting to um, the uh, Pindale School from, from this area, crossing Valley Forge Road at 4 o'clock when your students are going to be getting out of those uh, extracurricular activities that they're going to be participating in. Um, it's going to be a very congested process. And if we're looking at trying to, quote unquote, uh, maintain clean air, which we have to as a mandate, not only with the school system, but also with parents, um, I think you should also consider that in the mix in terms of trying to look at something that's going to manage the highway system, manage the lives of parents, as well as uh, ensuring that we have a quality education for all. Mr. Collins, your first point again? Yes, my first, first question, question. The first question was the, the, uh, the rationale in terms of retaining intact schools. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll comment briefly on each of those. Um, of course, one of the strongest rationales in, in consideration in drawing these lines was finding ways to keep the elementary, the current new elementary boundaries intact as we establish the middle level. That was a priority. We've heard that in budget deliberations 
on the, in the many times that it's happened in the school system as a priority. So certainly it became a priority of this task force to try to meet that need. We've done that in this option. Other options, as I've explained, in, in most instances would cause some sort of split. Um, you did make a comment about staffing. We're in the process of, of making decisions about staffing, but of course we can't finalize those decisions until the boundaries are established and we know how many students in each grade are going to be in each school so that we can determine the number of sections of courses that need to be taught, the number of teams that we need to have, and so forth. We'll consider all of the staff um, who currently teach in grades 7 through 9, and it will be our intent to put the um, uh, staffs together as we think is best suited for the teams and the schools that, uh, um, the three schools that we have. Um, Right now, it appears as though we'll have two teams in, in seventh grade and two teams in eighth grade in Pembroke, and the same number in Penfield, probably three teams in Pendale in seventh and eighth grade. Um, so we'll need to look at the mix of the teachers that go into those teams. Um, we've asked teachers for their preference, what schools they prefer to go to, uh, but of course, we won't be able to accommodate all those wishes and there'll certainly be staff members moved from the school they're in now. Since all of our 8th and ninth grade teachers are in one building and we need 8th and ninth grade subjects taught in the other two, there's obviously going to be moves there. Uh, congestion, you're right. It certainly is an issue in this community, uh, especially when you have bad weather. And we have a lot of that. Um, Obviously, with our busing situation right now, all of our students in eighth and ninth grade attend one building in the center of Lansdale. Um, when we have three seven, eight, nine schools, uh, we won't be congested in one area, bringing all of the students from the district into that center point. Instead, the busing routes will be established wherever the three boundary areas exist. So our hope is that busing um, congestion problems would be reduced. I understand crossing certain roads is going to be difficult, increasingly difficult in this community, but um, our feeling is that that will lessen that a little bit. Um, I'm not the transportation person to respond specifically, but that's our sense. Thank you all for coming this evening. Oops. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Virginia Oman Setter, 1432 Leesway, Hatfield, Pennsylvania. Um, I know you worked hard, and I have been here both nights listening and speaking. Uh, my main thing to this group now is that you take into consideration what you've heard these two nights. And I may be wrong, but what I have heard are two main priorities. One is that you look at the communities instead of the schools. I do not hear a lot of people saying you need to keep the elementary schools intact. I heard you need to look at the communities. The other one is that you look at the size of the buildings that you're feeding into and that you try to equal them out more. I do not think that's too much to ask. I know you worked hard and I know you had some directives as to what kinds of things the district would like and I understand that but I think the community has spoken tonight and Monday night. Thank you. I'm not trying to drag this out, but I think the third point is consider the boundaries of the yes. high school. Okay, don't ignore that, please. I'm Barbara Howard from Nap Road, Montgomery Township, and I know at least three of you fairly well on there, and I want you to know that I agree no one sitting back here who has not been on your committee knows the hours you put in there. And I hope at least three of you won't take this personally and we'll still be friends. <laughs> but I agree with Jenny that most everything you've heard here tonight is 
we need some changes. My concern is, what happens now that you've listened to all of us? Where does this go? Um, I believe I've heard that as of March 8th, there will be a vote by the school board. Is that correct? No. Good. <laughs> the discussion with the board will be March 8th. Okay. We will discuss it in committee. There are several board members here at the moment who have been listening. The board members who could not make it will have access to the videos so they can listen to the information also, besides the written information that we have also put together, so that the board will be able to discuss it, we will discuss it, we'll look at the numbers and, and the community input, which is why we have these meetings. There will not be a decision made on the 8th. If a decision is made, the earliest it would be on the 17th, and that may not be you know, the earliest. We would like, hopefully, to make it before April because of having to staff the buildings and things of that nature, okay. but certainly the 8th is for the board to discuss things. Okay. Don't get hyper on this. It's, no, it's right. not that fast. Well, I had also heard that as of the 15th that teachers were going to be told, and if you didn't vote before then, how could teachers be given I, I told the staff that our target for notifying them regarding their staff preferences was March 15th. I also explained that it was a target it's and that we were not obviously going to do that until the boundaries were defined. Okay. Um, also, and I, I know it might be a moot point at this point, but apparently on Monday night, a parent spoke up and said that the district is hampered by state regulations that will not allow Pendale to field two teams. Does anyone? Dr. Venema just addressed that with Mr. Fisher, that at that age level, that is, you can do two teams, and we will look at because it. My understanding is that, that we're still able to do that, unless PIAA has changed that. But we did that at one time in the system. When, the, when uh, our 8-9 building was established, we had two teams in some sports. Um, that, didn't, that wasn't successful, and ultimately, we didn't continue That's with that. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no PIAA restriction on that, but I would have to check that. I know for a fact you can't do it with high schools. Okay. The thing is, you're working with a different configuration now, not just 8th and ninth. You're working with 7th, 8th, and ninth. 7th graders are more likely to try to go out for sports. They haven't, they haven't had the disappointment yet <laughs> of not making the team. So that's one of the reasons I was hoping that no matter what the board votes, you still only can have five kids on a basketball team, 11 on a soccer team. So hopefully, if it didn't work in the past, maybe you could reconsider it for the future. Um, also, um, is there any way we can get a breakdown for numbers for the seventh graders in all three schools, the eighth graders in all three schools, so that we would know how many would be on each, team, uh, each of those projected teams for next year? Now we have a we have a total here of how many students per three. For it's um, we have those numbers. They're not they're roughly balanced among the three grades. There's a few more in one grade or another, but not a significant difference. Right, but Once because Pendale is larger, you're going to have more per team. Right, and you're you saying there are only three teams, and I would like to divide the amount for the three teams right. and the three schools so that. Once the boundaries are set, we will have information as to what the attendance will be for the three grades. Realize that the boundaries are not set yet. So that until the boundaries are set, you would not know how many will be going for each grade and the teams. So once those boundaries are set, then we will have that information on how many children are okay, in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. The procedure now is it goes back to the board for discussion. The, so the committee no longer has any No, say. the, the no committee. <laughs> We're meeting as soon as we, this meeting is over, as a matter of fact, and, okay. and we'll meet other times to talk about the input that we received tonight and what we're going to consider further and what additional work we need to do prior to March the 8th when the board discussion will occur. Uh, one last thing. You said you were kind enough to say if we could find an alternative that you could look at. The problem is we don't have the numbers of the children from the schools or different areas. How could we possibly do that? Other than, as some people have done, made suggestions that we consider different 
areas right, to be split, that, that's about all you can do. It's, it's very complicated for right. us to pull out the number of students by grade. Uh, we have to go into a computer system and, and get those numbers out, and we have to do it for a three-year period, which means we have to look at the, the number right. of current 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students to see what the population would look like over three years. And then we have to build a growth factor into that. So it is, it's pretty complex to, to get a good estimate. Okay. By the way, if it is evident, I, I agree with everyone else. I think we have to consider the high school boundaries. And also, I, I really feel you can break up the elementary schools because my child never got to be in groups with his peers, for his, his friends from elementary school. That isn't the way it's done in middle school. It isn't the way, it's according to, um, so that, I can't, I can't use that as a logic. Also, if you haven't read it yet, everyone should read Barbara Delp's column. It says it all. Thank you. My name is Nadia Melzer. I live at 246 Twining Road in Montgomery Township. And if, if the numbers stay the same as they are, will Pendale have twice the number of guidance counselors, twice the number of assist, assistant principals, two principals since it's twice the size? I mean, will it be, you know? Well, the district has, let me comment on that. The district has class size guidelines that we intend to adhere to. In most major subjects, except those that, that have requirements because of lab stations and so forth. The, the guidelines are 26 to 29 students in the typical classroom. We intend to adhere to those. Um, we also have to provide the appropriate support services that are necessary. Right. And that's My concern everything is from that secretaries to assistant principals and principals. We consider all of that in our in staff. But will schools. there be an equitable number of children per assistant principal in all three schools? It might not be exactly the same. No, It'd I wouldn't say close. exact. But there will be, let's say, twice the number in Pendale as opposed to Penn Brook based on these current numbers. Well, I'm not going to say twice the number, but it will be an equitable number. An equitable number. number. So that, and all right, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Are we all done? <laughs> oh. Very minor comment. Um, Jenny Collins, Cherry Lane, and Tom Ensign. Um, you were not involved in the elementary boundary, so I'm not offending anybody by saying this, but to someone who also, I didn't go, my kids walked to Englewood and I knew I'd be there. The way it looked to me afterwards was very, it wasn't decided based on what was the best situation. It was decided on who had the most money and who had some political connection. Because if you look at Englewood, the wealthier families got taken, I don't, who went, who were supposed to go to Englewood, got sent to Gwinnett Square, and the lower income people who didn't want to go to Inglewood were forced to go to Inglewood. I just want to say I hope you don't look at any political or financial backgrounds for this. Make it a very fair across the board decision. Thank you. Ma'am. Gail Higgins, 1110 Washington Avenue. I just want to say um, I have no solutions, um, although I do like some of the solutions that have been mentioned here. Um, I have a daughter who has a very close relationship with a friend of hers, and I just, uh, it's, at this age, I just want to reiterate you know, what everyone else is saying. At this age, it's very, very crucial, these friendships. She's going into eighth grade, and I just would hate to see this separation happen to her. Um, I just. That's all I can say. It's, it's just, I hope you consider the children in all of this and do what's fair for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Josie Basher, Valley Brook Drive, Lansdale. My question is about Penn Field and Pembroke will have two teams. Pendale will have three. Pendale will have double the amount of students. Now, class ratio, either I don't get it, or definitely the numbers aren't there. How can Pendale have just one more team? What will the class ratio be, students to teacher? 
Pembroke and Penfield as opposed to Pendale? We, we don't have the details of exactly how large each each team will be in each school. Right now. But you just take these numbers and divide them up by two or it's by not three. That simple. Well. There are other complications associated with it. But there are some self contained classes and so forth. But um, we, we, our plan is not to make class sizes larger than what the district class size guidelines are. So if, if, if that, that in itself will drive the number of teams that we need in each school. We're estimating at this point two in Brook, two in Field, and three in Dale in each of the two grades. Uh, that's an estimate. You know, if, we f if a team is so large that, that it's going to take the class sizes above 29, then we're going to reconsider that and consider additional teams. Right, but the but students at Penn Field and Penn Brook will make out better on their teams because their class sizes will be smaller since they only that, have two teams. Where Pendale, you have double the amount of kids. That could be initially, and then as and the that's schools, not right to the as the schools grow, we would, and, and there's consideration to add an additional team, then in the school where the additional team is added, the ratio might end up being lower than it is in the other schools. So it's not something that's going to be the same from year to year. Uh, it, would, it would be reconsidered as we look at staffing and the number of students in each grade each year in each school. So, you know, the numbers are never constant. As you can see from the chart, the numbers change But there's change a large difference, though. When you look at Pendale as opposed to Pembroke and Penfield, there's initially, a large difference. Initially, it's double. that's the case, yes. Right, it's double. So it just doesn't seem like the students at Pendale are, are going to come out as well as Penfield and Pembroke. Thank you. My name is Susan Schneider. I live at 705 Abbey Lane in Townmanson Township. I've been here both nights, and I just want to stand up and be counted as one more Inglewood family that would like to see that boundary line changed to Valley Forge Road. And I would like my children to go to Penfield. Um, my name is Allison Brick. I'm from 168 Jenkins Avenue, Colmar. I'm part of AM Cult. I'd like to first say that my family has gone to the North Penn schools for 10 years now. Seven years ago, I assume it was the PEL, came in to look at the middle school growth. At that point, Penn Field was projected to be overextended or there would be too many children. So a task force was put into operation, and the recommendation was that a very small population from AM Culp leave Penfield and go to Penbrook about seven years ago. So I had children in my community spend one year in Penfield, the next year in Penbrook. Two years ago, almost to this date, another task force came into operation. I went to both community um, talk sessions. I know many of you were on that committee. At that point, once again, my community was taken out of Penbrook and put into Penfield. So far, to my knowledge, we are the only community, my home, 30-something um, houses and some extras, that have now and will go through three changes on the middle school level. I want to know, I have another child coming along. This is my third group of faculty members I now know. Can you honestly tell me that, let's say, within the next couple of years, if the PEL once again examines the numbers and it changes, that my child will once again have to change? Now, I went along with all the district's changes, and I supported my children through everything. And as I'm saying, I want to know, is this guaranteed? Or once again, when there's more growth than thought. I, th I think it would be crazy for me to guarantee anything about population mm -hmm. growth. Our hope is that whatever boundary we put together seriously limits the chances of having to do it again. But clearly, there are no guarantees. But why is one um, community the one that is constantly being changed? And we went along with it, and we spoke up. And we are once again subjected to this change. We are being taken out of a Hatfield school and placed in another school 
within two years after the last task force. You happen to be one of a very small group I know, where it but happened. It's, I but it's still my children. Yes. Okay. And I really wish everyone would take that into mind. I support my children through yeah. everything. But when you constantly go through this at a very, um, I feel, important developmental level, I can go along with the elementary, I can go home along with the senior high. But as everyone knows, that age group, the de development is unbelievable. And I'd like to make sure that my children have the best situation possible. Thank you. My name is Linda Just, and I live at 3025 Valley View Way. And I just want to say that my, when I moved here from Maryland, uh, my daughter was in second grade. She's attended, this will be her fourth school. She has changed because of the problems with the redistricting. And uh, she originally went to Nash, and they, she went one year to Gwinnett Square. Then she went to Penfield, and now she'll be going to Penbrook. And I just can't see why they have to have the boundary lines changed at Creeble Road. Um, it seems that those 50, 60 kids that live from Creeble Road up to Valley Forge Road are always being made to change. And I just wish you could stay in Penfield. Thank you. My name is Cindy Granenko. I'm from Cherry Lane in Lansdale, Tillman's. And um, I was here the other night and I spoke and wasn't going to, but the longer you sit and listen to everybody else, the more you realize you have more to say. I'm going to show you the map. I didn't come to the elementary meeting. I wasn't affected. I live right through the backyard of, Element, of Inglewood. There's no reason to come. If everyone remembers, Inglewood Elementary School, school extended originally, before the recommendations were ever made, extended out this way, where Walton Farm now is. And it goes pretty far back. So as you can see, there was never any consideration that where I lived, I never thought about the middle school. Because we're right at Penfield, we're Tell Manson, and our community went through Thomas. At the first handout of the elementary level, Inglewood was created in this direction. Again, a Thomas community, which I assumed would go to Penfield. Obviously, my assumptions were wrong. I never attended the meeting because, number one, I never realized things would be divided up by elementary school. And number two, I, again, felt we wouldn't be affected. Valley Forge Road was a major road to me. We're right here in Inglewood, and Penfield's in our neighborhood. Okay, by the second rearrangement of the elementary school level, we have this odd-shaped configuration, which I know has been laughed at, talked about. Inglewood seems to be the dredges where no one wants to go. I have to love it. But somehow this created, and I mean the paper and, and the follow-up that followed about Inglewood, knowing no one wanting to go there was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> In any case, now we're stuck with this real messy look. And if you look at some of the other schools, they're not quite as funny looking. I think everybody can agree that a major mistake was made here, and it's not you to correct it. I understand that. However, what I'm asking tonight is that don't let it continue. This little piece of Valley Forge Road, which is not part, which continues to be part of Inglewood, and go into Lansdale, is not part of Tom Hudson. And I'm asking once again tonight for you to consider that Valley Forge Road be the cutoff for trying kids. Because in safety again, it's just not safe to have kids going from Inglewood, 1.9 miles to Pendeal, cross train truck, two sets, Valley Forge Road, and major congestion. Thank you. So true. As you sit there, you, learn, you realize what you didn't say. But I did have one question that I wanted to ask, and I don't want to, again, the work you did, I understand the volunteer time, and you're all to be commended for that, and it's volunteers like you that make our community and our education, North Penn School District, a, um, a quality area. However, did anyone question or ask Central Bucks School District 
about when they had the split between East and West. So you could gain from their experience how they handled the splitting of the schools and the boundary lines for middle schools, uh, junior highs, and elementary education uh, schools. I've had several conversations with, with people in Central Bucks because of the similarity in our size and, and our reorganization. I did not get into boundary situations with them. Their elementary sending areas and ours are really unrelated in many, many ways in their neighborhoods and, and everything else. Um, I would predict once we get closer to looking at high school boundaries, we'll talk to several districts about the, the, tech, the methods they employed in, re in establishing two high school boundaries from one. So we'll certainly look into that. But at, at, by not doing that or, or considering those options first, you're, you're creating, again, another vacuum or another uh, widespread repercussion that these boundary lines can be changed because of the secondary le uh, high school level boundaries. And maybe that should have been considered first. My name is Pat Childs. I live at 2653 Valley Woods Road, Hatfield. And presently, my children go to A.M. Culp School. I just want to reiterate the fact that uh, the two teams versus the three teams, right now, my children will be slated to go to Pendale. And you say initially the figures and the students and the, uh, will not be fair. The, no, I, I never said they were. Well, be no, fair. I, 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 I misinterpreted. No, that's not what I want to say. Wait a minute. Two teams is versus three teams. Two in Pembroke, two in Penfield, and that's the way it's. That's what, we, that's what we anticipate. And then you say initially. In the first year, is yeah. what I said. In the in the first year, um, with the numbers that you see there, it appears that though, that the number of students on a team may be somewhat larger at Pendale than they are at Penbrook and Penfield. If we have three teams, in Pendale, and that's what we're anticipating at the moment. But as the numbers increase over the years, the number of teams may also change in any one of the schools, depending on how all the, all the growth occurs. So my point to the woman who brought that up was that um, down the road, if we add an additional team at Pendale, for example, um, then the class size on those particular teams may be lower than it is at Pembroke or Penfield. So, my point was that, that in the first year, yeah, this, this might be the circumstance, but beyond that, uh, but populations can change, and we don't know exactly how many we're going to get in each grade in each of the three schools. Let's think about that one. Yeah. I think we're done. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. As we stated before, we will look at this, the board will be looking at it, and hopefully you'll all come out March 8th and listen to the board discussion. Have a good evening.